for chatty, sassy, and Max. So, um, you know, just, uh, I, I love, I love doing this kind of stuff. I have an illustration background and in the 10 years that I've been at Salesforce, it's just my illustration skills have kind of followed me into to projects and such. And, um, it's, it, it's provided an opportunity for me to grow my team in really fun ways to add folks like Paul who uh, Paul Antonson uh, is, is who I consider our lead illustrator as part of our group. And he's been really involved in helping uh, characters like Flo, you know, um, make their, you know, make those magical moments for us. And there's a whole process to just how a character gets started. And the best way to describe it is like, first, you know, you have a business need. Right. Um, you know, and I'll say that, you know, over time, like how we've created characters has really evolved to be much more expansive and, and, and complex, but, you know, really does highlight the talents of folks like Paul and the team, you know, like we bring in, we bring in some pretty amazing talent to just help us, you know, create the story. And so the business need always comes first, right? You got to have a plan, a goal. And for, um, you know, with the arrival of, you know, back in the day of Einstein and the inclusion and arrival of Genie, you know, we've, we, um, we really doubled down on our technology story. And so we know that there is a passionate group of Flonatics. And so with, you know, we really wanted to celebrate all things flow. So we wanted to create a character that was the ultimate Flonatic that was there for the Flonatics and helping us tell the story, you know, in a fun new way. Genie, Flo, and Einstein are like a, a power trio. They're, they're just kind of like a really fun group to, um, you know, to put together. And I'd love to just kind of see what they do together. So, you know, for future storytelling, you know, we'll really kind of, you know, we'll include those characters in really fun ways to kind of, you know, really, show, you know, be about magic, friendship, collaboration. And, and so, you know, with, with the, you know, just like we have the technology story, we have the business need, we have, you know, all right, well, how, what's it going to be like? And so Paul and I working with um, a couple of really great, um, you know, character illustrators, like that's their main thing is they know how to draw characters. Um, and they, you know, they work on our 3D side so that, you know, we want to make sure that whatever we draw is going to be possible in 3D because we have a lot of 3D versions of our characters. So there's a lot of alignment that happens before you even put pencil to paper, right? And so, uh, you know, Paul, you know, what, what am I missing here just in terms of just kind of like the need and stuff? Because it's like we get into personality swipes of like, we, we bring in different kind of animals to say, could this animal be this? Could this animal do this? And we put a lot of ideas on the table before, you know, anything gets drawn. Yeah, um, you, I think you covered it all, but um, a lot of talented people come together to, to kind of get the character in, in the final spot. And um, I've been with the company three years and have, so I've been able to work on some of the recent characters and super fun, super fun process. Is that how you guys come up with all the different stickers and stuff? You're like, what would these guys do if they were sitting in a room hanging out together? <laughs> what would they do? Like, I mean, we it's it's like, are they sitting in a room? Are they out on the trail? Are they on an adventure? Like, you know, we really think about like, what is the most inspiring way to to really share our story? the Salesforce story, right? And so, you know, what's what's really, you know, something that at the heart of this is always trying to bring in your story. You know, what is it that you want out of, you know, what is it you want to see? What delights you? What inspires you? And what motivates you to just kind of work in the ways that you do, you know? And, and how do we make it better? How do the characters help you make it better? You know, like, um, do, can they draw attention to something, you know, a, a, you know, some learning, some, uh, you know, a connection and opportunity, you know, they're all guides in a way. Um, just, you know, they all have jobs for sure. Love that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, um, and, and, you know, and we had a lot of fun coming up with this one because it was like, you know, we want this character to go with the flow and, you know, and, and, you know, we wanted the character to, uh, you know, just, 
to be, you know, as always playful and fun. And we looked at magical characters. We looked at, um, you know, we looked at uh, characters that um, just kind of, we have, you know, we had a group, we had a group from the platform team just kind of throwing out really interesting ideas that, you know, help. And I think this is a really good point about teamwork and collab, you know, collaborations is that, you know, any idea, a good idea can come from anyone. And just because we're the character team doesn't mean that we have to have all the character ideas for characters. Like we really listen to what our colleagues want and they also really like what we do. So they want to have fun with us too. And we want everyone to have as much fun as we're having. So, um, you know, so, so the platform team came up with a, a lot of really cool, um, characters like character suggestions personality swipes and and then we took the um the opportunity to you know um you know just kind of see like is it going to be is it going to be a we had a hedgehog we had a penguin we had a unicorn and and then we brought in some more ideas and that's where the flying squirrel came in and so uh you know and by the time we had shared it with um our nvps we had the flying squirrel, we had the unicorn, and we had the hedgehog. And it was so exciting to hear feedback. Like you don't get feedback all the time on things you do, right? Immediately or before they get launched. And so it was really cool to get a suggest get suggestions like from the automation council, from uh, MVPs, like, you know, just community folks really kind of just saying, you know, this feels like this would be the right approach and why. And, and that was really cool to get feedback. Feedback's a gift, in my opinion. So it's really something that helps us just kind of make it, you know, make it really matter, you know, to every, you know, make it count and uh, make it possible. So um, why don't we get started with the drawing? Cause so I'm gonna draw a pose and then Paul's gonna draw a pose. And I picked this one. I thought this one was really super cute. Oh, look at you, you've already got your stuff. And I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about how I draw. So my drawing is not like I, you're not going to see like a perfect version of flow you know that looks like my printout right i'm not that kind of i'm not that kind of illustrator or artist like but you're going to see you're going to see me draw flow in and uh you know in a really fun way and i want to kind of show like i did a pre-drawing to kind of give you an idea of like how sketchy you can be and then you can cut like start with really light lines and then when you go in with darker lines you can really start to kind of you know dial in your details you know it helps you to erase less i think in a lot of ways and and you know start over like i feel like you can really take things really far without having to do all that kind of stuff so you know get some sharp pencils get some paper uh, you know, I've got a pencil sharpener here, you know, and I've got a, I've got my, um, I've got my pencil, my eraser, you know, this is, this is what I've got. Sometimes I draw with pen cause I'm crazy, but you know, I like pencil because I can really get a variety of line, line density. So you can see here that, you know, just draw on, I'm trying to get this on here so you can see the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's like, you know, you can be really, really sketchy with it and then just go for it. So, <clears throat> all right. So I want to kind of, you know, I want you to think about this in like a shape that like you can see here, there's a triangle here and that, and understanding that there's a triangle here kind of helps you kind of get a sense of the gesture. Okay. And I'm not going to draw the, the wings first. I'm not going to draw, like, I usually start, like I do the head, you know, I really just want to make sure like the head and the body feel proportional. So looking at this, you know, what I got here, I'm, I'm looking at just kind of like, you know, just kind of drawing very simple kind of gesture. You know, like I, I was talking about that triangle kind of thing. And so I've got like a head, I've got the body, I've got, you know, there's gonna be little legs and, and away we go. So really, really light kind of drawing, like sketchy first stuff. And Paul, please like add along the way if there's anything that I've missed. Um, you know, yes, Flo's head is not a circle, but it's gonna help me just kind of get the top of the head and just kind of where I'm gonna kind of put in like, you know, like, you know, just like the, 
the pieces, you know, I'm just trying to get like a sense to feel like I can, I can just start to just kind of get in those shapes, make sure that I get the eyes in there, you know, um, and, you know, get all the kind of details that really feel like, you know, this is my, this is our buddy, right? Yeah. And I'll, I'll just second, I, I go through the exact same steps when drawing a character you you think about the big picture proportions like um how how big is the head compared to the rest of the body and with flow it's kind of one head the body the head is quite large compared to flow's body where it's the body is about one and a half of flow's head so you just kind of when drawing it out you kind of just want to make sure those base proportions are are there and then just the the roughest shapes kind of there's a slight bell shape to Flo's head, you know, you almost think of it first without ears or any of the other details, just the overall shape. And then kind of the torso and, and body is a little bit pear-like, not a full pear, but kind of tapers wider. Um, and then looking at the size of the feet. And so just like Dom said, I, I use a old kind of illustration technique of drawing lightly with a blue pencil. Um, and I, I do that still even on my iPad, but uh, we'll draw with a blue pencil, which used to not be picked up by a photocopier. Um, but now I just do it digitally. But once you have those basic shapes in place, then you feel way more confident moving forward, just like Dom's doing with really light line art. Once you feel good about that, then you have all this confidence to move forward. Otherwise, Otherwise, it's just hard drawing straight from up on, onto a blank page and getting the proportions right. And and I'm I'm not like a like a drawer where I can just like boldly make like a line. I think I have to kind of like hatch it in a little bit. So that's like called hatching, you know. Which so I would say that that's that's how I do it. And there's a perspective here on the head of just like you know how these glasses fit. So. Um, you know, these goggles, excuse me. And so you can kind of see that I'm thinking about that as I'm, as I'm going along, you know, just kind of drawing, drawing those pieces in. All right. So, yeah. So you can kind of see like starting to get a little bit of our buddies, you know, kind of features in here and, you know, and then, you know, the, the face is, is a really big part of making this, you know, work. So, just the, you know, thinking about like, you know, kind of like how this moves out there, we're going to have whiskers here, starting to just kind of make that happen. Um, there's going to be a hand that slightly overlaps their face, you can kind of tell there. So I've got to make sure that I've got that in there too, you know, and getting the getting those um, the features in there, like, you know, it's like, I've got a hand here, I've got a hand here. And then coming down, you know, like there's like a the body's got a you know kind of a bell shape. Would you say like yeah. like or kind of vegetable, you know, sort of squashy? Yeah, uh, mixed between a pear and a zucchini. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, or a uh, yeah butternut squash, butternut squash. Yeah. Down, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it's squashy, right? Yeah. You know, and then so you can kind of see like the the hand. The hand hits about like right, right here, the eye, you know, just like, so I'm starting to just kind of like, you know, just pull in those pieces to just kind of like, you know, call to tell that story. So another arm is here, about here, and, and then drawing here, it tapers to there, you know, and then uh, remember, I haven't done the wings yet, no tail yet. I'm just trying to get the body right. And, you know, just getting in all the, you know, just kind of like where these things are going to go. So you can kind of see like they're starting to take to take shape. There's there's a little bit of um, on this foot on the bottom, you know, like because there's a pull here on this on this character, you know, just like because they're waving their hand, it kind of makes the the foot, you know, the foot down here have a little bit of a, you know, not a, they're not tiptoe right it's it's just you know a different kind of you know you just have to see kind of like where it you know how it fits and like you know a little gesture there it's like i've got my little foot there a little, little boot and this one comes out at a little you know just a little higher because it's not it's not on the same plane because you know they're raising their hand
you know, I can already see like, you know, like, oh, you know, just take out that little piece right there, you know, so far, that's the only thing I've, I've erased. And, um, and then, you know, there's going to be a little swoopy swoop here, here, and then let's get some, you know, some volume in the, in the scarf kind of goes over the shoulder and then swoops in and, um, and then the tie hit happens underneath. So Yeah. And, you know, Paul, how long would you say that, you know, like, so when we're, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about the process we're going along here. So as we're, you know, we're drawing, we're thinking about flow, we don't, you know, the Connie, who we worked with on, on this, didn't just like send us a thing and say, here's flow. You know, it was definitely like, we looked at different head shapes. We looked at different body um, you know, body scenarios. We looked at a lot of, you know, just kind of features like the, you know, the mohawk on the head, the colors, like all these different kinds of things to, to just really get the balance right. And while we know that this is, you know, this is a squirrel is a small character, as is a rabbit, they had to, you know, stand Pre, you know, stand next to Einstein, and they couldn't be like these two little babies on the on the ground. You know, so with, with the you know with the aid of magic and you know um, just su suspended disbelief, yeah. <laughs> you know, you make you make your characters a little bigger than they you know than they meant to be. Yeah, you can't go strictly with what uh, proportional to nature. Um, but yeah, it, it's an interest. It's a it's such a fun process. You know, we had a lot of different goggles. Um, the goggles went kind of futuristic at, at times, yeah. but that didn't feel quite right. And, um, and we didn't want them too old timey either. That was another yes. thing. Like that was why you won't see stuff like be all like steampunk and things like that. Yeah, you wanted them to feel classic and right, but not too far in one direction. Um, and yeah, you know, we work with this great character designer named Connie Kang, and um, I can send some sketches to Connie w along the way I'm drawing the character. Um, and Connie will do what's called an overdraw, which is done a lot in animation, where someone will just she'll just draw over my sketches, and we'll just taper the lines a little bit, make some subtle adjustments. But she's so uh, incredibly good at um, the not just the proportionality of the character, giving them this kind of 3D quality. So, so suddenly it feels like you could spin the character around. She comes from an animation background. And um, so I think like the, the way we do this teamwork is great where we're all kind of developing the character and, and filtering down some of the ideas into the, the best ideas. And then um, someone like Connie can step in and just, just make some incredible, um, design design decisions to just kind of really bring the character to life and she's also great with like really dynamic poses um again even just subtle things that can leaping into the air um into a, a whole another cool space with it where it, it just subtle things she can do you know when, when you're drawing that can take a, a pose from interesting to super dynamic and fun and and so we i think we lean on each other's strengths um to try to you know get to the best set of of, of illustrations and then those go form the 3d process and uh animators can run with the poses and um yeah it's it's very fun to be to be in that process and i'll just quickly show like so i draw um on an ipad a lot i'll do Thumbnails. I like to kind of thumbnail quickly on paper um, to get it, and and I'll refer to those a lot because I can just look at this very quick, sketchy thumbnail that might have taken thirty seconds to draw. But as long as those proportions are right, I can keep going back to that as sort of a source of truth. Like, am I on the right uh, path with this? Um, for drawing, I use uh, Procreate, which is um an app for the iPad that is a really fantastic drawing app. And in a case like I had kind of mentioned blue pencil, um, this is sort of an example of like what the blue, super fast, super rough, um, but you have the proportions in place. You, you, you know, you're not going to start drawing and realize the tail is going to go off the page. Um, 
you know, you kind of get a, a sense if the head is in correct proportion to the rest of the character and the basic shapes are in play. Um, so once you have that, you you have all this confidence to go in and, and start doing the line work and start fleshing out the character, um, just getting those basics um, under wrap. It, just even little details like the scarf. We had all sorts of things. We even had a version where Flo was wearing a jetpack just to see how that yep. felt. <laughs> but you know, Flo can already fly, so um, no need to bring a jetpack in. But we definitely um, play around with with different ideas and and see what feels right. Um, but just you know, I, th I think the scarf and and Salesforce blue at the end of the day felt felt really good. Felt like it was a nice color to go with the rest of the color, the browns and the gray, the warm grays of, of the character. And um, I think at the end of the day, we, we were all really happy with, with how the character came out. Into things, can uh, take into consideration um, this, the symmetry involved because that just can add some difficulties if a character like whether you can just flip a character if you want a character who's facing to the left to face to the right can you just flip them or is there something about the design which would in fact you would need to re-illustrate that character and we kind of have ideally a character is symmetrical on both sides it it makes the process easier but um each character kind of requires their own needs and so you know we don't make it mandatory that they're symmetrical. It just helps the process. But um, Flo is mostly a symmetrical character, um, except really for the scarf, because we really aim for consistency from pose to pose. Even the way um, their scarf kind of, uh, one part of the scarf comes down a little farther than the other one. And we really just try to keep that just consistent. So every time you see the character, even though they're in a completely different dynamic pose, all those core elements are are the way they're supposed to be. The goggles look the same, and um, the scarf looks the same. You know, we we're trying to build up this library of really a consistent brand. Um, nice. Oh, that looks awesome, though. Thanks. So you know, you could just see like you know, just like starting light, and then you know, thinking about those basic shapes, and then you can start to really build out you know, those little details, you get the, you get the little fur there on the sides, you can, you know, we can dial in the glasses a little bit more, you know, I can definitely go bananas with this. So you can just kind of see that's, that's just kind of, you know, that's the fun of drawing, like, you just, you, you learn to see, and, you know, and find details along the way and say, Oh, I should add this. And Oh, I should do this. Now, I saw a question about the fingers. So, um, mm -hmm the fingers there's four fingers and so um that's actually something that um it's kind of a thing with you know in the anime you know on the animator side on the 3d side like where to be consistent they wanted all the characters to have four fingers and so that you know that's kind of like that's that was how that decision was was being made and uh yeah we're looking at you know just kind of doing that with all of our characters you might have noticed in 3d you can see ruth with with um four fingers and you know stuff like that so um yeah it's it's just amazing just what a little bit of just kind of light stuff you know like i said like you know starting with something like this and then it can get darker and deeper and i could go into shading this and you know just all this kind of stuff so um, you know, I could go, I could go bananas with this and, uh, it's a lot of fun. This is also one of the ones that has a tooth. Um, we, um, we don't generally, you know, do a ton of teeth, um, with the characters, but this was one that just kind of, it just, you, it just lent itself to, you know, having that. And, and so, yeah, we'll see if just kind of how that, how that works. <laughs> <laughs> take from the house of the mouse oh boy yeah i know isn't that crazy how that's how that's happening i think you know disney's a disney's a customer of ours and we want to be you know we're going to be nice to you know and just play along i hope someday that mickey and astro can you know go on adventures together but you know you know that's that that's they've never done that with anybody any character outside of the disney world so oh, 
you know, one can dream, but I'd love a high five or something. You know, we did that with GitHub a long time ago uh, with, with OctoCat, like where they, they do a high five and they don't exactly touch, but they like they're close. And I, I don't know where that sticker is, but I've got it somewhere. And it's just like, yeah, it, that like those things, those things can happen. They just require a lot of work. All right. So I probably, you know, I mean, you know, there's things like in the drawing, like this arm is probably a little longer than I, you know, would make it, but, you know, in general, but I think that it's, it's close. And, you know, I think the whole idea is that I tried, right? So, um, and that you tried and, and I want to see, I want to see drawings. So um, before Paul gets started with his, can anyone share their drawing? Um, please do. I'd love to see. Crickets, come on. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll turn everybody on so people can. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I've been called out. Okay, I didn't. I didn't do a marker yet. So, hey, those are great. Said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, thanks for sharing. All right, cool. Um, so, any questions for me before I before I pass the mic over to and the and the camera to to Paul? All right, let's let's get going. So I'll I'll stop sharing, I'll stop sharing my video so I can like readjust my camera and you can you can see me and uh, and then Paul, I'm gonna pass pass things over to you. Cool, sounds good. And um, uh, apologies, you know my setup is a little funny drawing on this iPad, but I think we can kind of make it work. But um, uh, so using this Apple Pencil, and I'll just kind of, for now, I'm going to draw right over this kind of blue line. Um, just, gonna, just sort of see the process. That's nice and loose. And um, then I'm going to just kind of switch over to black pencil. And um, it's funny when doing this, because then you go down a trip down memory lane of like working on the character. And uh, really all the decide decisions coming into play um, but it's just so easy once the, once that, and it's great to erase your mistakes, but once that blue line's in there, you can just kind of go to town and uh, you have the confidence of, of just drawing that. And, you know, the side of the head always gets three with, and that kind of like consistency of character. So I get my three whiskers in there, my kind of bell-shaped chin. My scarf, we even try to put the folds and the scarf in consistent spots. Like there's always kind of the way, the way it kind of folds around the, the neck there. Always aim for consistency. Um, gonna kind of quickly draw our goggles here. And I, sorry, I don't have quite the draw along as well as Dom did, but. Um, hey, I'm amazed that you can do it like the way you're doing it, so. Well, it kind of turned. Um, <laughs> <It's> pretty amazing. <laughs> um, and we, we love the mohawk and we, we had some fun going a little crazy with the mohawk. It was a little kind of punk rock for one, one pass and was a little purple, but wasn't, you know, it's always good to go too far with your design decisions and then kind of, uh, pull out what's what's unnecessary or not working. Um, and then we have their cool, they have these kind of circular arches over the eyes and that then cut back towards the whiskers. And kind of like the great, I, I think the best characters and uh, like this is with Disney, um, but also with, uh, with Astro, which Dom uh, designed, is you can draw them very quickly and they're like, instantly recognizable and that I think like a great character can happen in that way and I think flow through everyone's efforts you know is kind of getting into that realm of a few quick a few quick marks and you know who it is and and what their personality is like um I love how you can just erase lines on the iPad but then just kind of going into our kind of butternut squash shaped torso that sort of slopes down. Can I just kind of erase this part and for the leg? 
And, you know, again, this is really kind of super loose, but this would be something that'd be really easy to take into. We use Adobe Illustrator for um, a lot of our production work. So this is something I would then bring right into Adobe Illustrator and set it on a layer and then start creating vectors under it. And then just this big swoopy tail. I mean, I think Flo's tail is kind of a secret of the design that's just really fun. And um, again, really just kind of getting those proportions right. Like are the feet the right size? Is the body and the head in proportion to one another? And, and you know, then I might turn off that line and um, super rough, but you know, that's uh, might be good enough to like bring into, into Illustrator and kind of go from there knowing as Don said, maybe like this arm is probably a little arm and um, you might want to articulate some things, but I'll show you one other example of, I had done some sketches for some new poses uh, and you can just how kind of sketchy they are. Like I didn't even finish drawing the one and so a lot of these drawings are enough for me, like I see them and I say, okay, I know exactly, I've gotten what I need to get from that sketch. I can take it into the computer at that point. Um, and so we do a lot of that, like you wanna have a good guide of, of what you're doing and a, a rough sketch is often just enough as like a guide to, to kind of then move forward. But without that, I find it really hard. It, it's really hard to go into a computer and just start drawing a character from scratch. It, it kind of doesn't work. You get really slow and it, it and overly finicky. So um, having that base sketch is like everything. And, and after that, it, it's just, you could then just kind of move very confidently, you know, through the process at that point. Yeah, we made a lot of decisions before really committing to a location, right? You know, like, or, com you know, committing to what you know, flow was going to look like. And, you know, we, we knew that they had to have personality. They knew they had to really kind of feel, you know, they had to like, you know, that they were going to be friends with Einstein and, uh, and Jeannie. And, you know, and, and so because of Jeannie, you know, a really great feedback that we got, like when we were, you know, surfacing different character ideas was that a unicorn didn't really feel like the right character for this because Jeannie was already magical. And so that was, you know, that was the, um, you know, that it just, Jeannie was already magical. So it was like, why do, you know, why have another man? You know, it's like, if everybody's magical, no one's magical. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just thinking about it, you know, we're not Hogwarts, you know, so we gotta, we gotta figure out like, you know, just it's there, everyone's got their talent, their superpowers and, you know, figuring that out's um, a lot of fun uh, because, Flo and Jeannie and Einstein, you know, represent technologies. Um, we want to keep their product stories really clear and simple. So you probably won't see any of those characters wearing Halloween costumes, uh, you know, or just kind of changing out of their typical attire because we just, we want to be really clear, you know, just who they are and what they do. And so, um, that's mostly why, you know, just like we'll go, go a little bit more crazy with some of our persona based characters to have, you know, to do Halloween things, you know, um, and, and speaking of trick or trailhead, Paul is Paul helps with that in really big ways. So if you have any suggestions for trick or trailhead, we're all ears. So, Definitely. you know, this is your moment. This is your time to, you know, just to give us, you know, give us, uh, you know, some inspo and, uh, you know, let's see what we can do. Like I said, you know, we love ideas and ideas don't just come from our team. We talk to all sorts of folks around the company about things. And I mean, I've just, I've had such really fun, you know, conversations around Easter eggs in, you know, community Easter eggs. Like Daryl Schraber, like what? You know, that whole thing, you know, just like, like, you know, so we made Daryl a, a turtle, you know, it's just like these fun kind of goofy things. And so I just, I love, you know, I, I, then there, there's like other stuff like, uh, you know, deployment fish, like, you know, and, and like, what do we do with those and zombie characters? I don't know if we will ever do zombies because, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of drooly and, and, and dead 
I once illustrated a horse that accidentally looked like a zombie. I don't know if you remember that, Dom. It was uh, it's like a trailblazer ranch image. And it's like, that horse kind of looks like a zombie. I was like, yeah, maybe I should <laughs> fix that. Zombie <laughs> horse is a little off brand. Yeah, it's it, it, um, we, we always look for just things that, are, that feel like positive, not spooky, you know, like and it's really funny, like uh, I've noticed with Disneyland, they had kind of the way that they talk about Halloween time, you know, because a lot of folks like to dress up like Nightmare Before Christmas. And that can be, you know, some elements of Halloween can be really scary to young kids. So they always say spooky, not scary. So I would think that that would be kind of something we would do. Um, we try to do all the characters like uh, Stranger Things and you can't do that because it's like, you know, copyright and, and stuff like that. But, you know, oh God, I, oh, they were so good. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it, I think, uh, you know, just, uh, <laughs> Astro is Marie Antoinette. Yeah, like like if it's a Marie Antoinette at Halloween, you know what you want. You want like, you know, off with her head, right? So it would almost have to be like, you know, holding the head in, in the arm, you know, like figuring out how to do like a, a headless version of Astro that is cute, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we go, it, it just like, it's spooky, not scary. And, uh, you know, but it's just, it's really fun. It's really fun to do what we do. Um, it's really fun to, you know, just to in include you and to, you know, take you on, take you on this journey with us. It's a lot of fun. I'm now going to be thinking about Halloween characters for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's yeah. great. The more ideas, we, the better. We, I mean, we no. did, last time it was a carnival, right? It was yeah. like sp spooky carnival. And then we had, we've done, um, you know, the Andy traditional Andy. at the front door trick or treating. Uh, what else, Paul? Everyone was a piece of candy the previous year. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, Cody was a giant gummy bear, and uh, there was a uh, dress kind of thing, and all sorts of, everyone was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that. Uh, Isn't there a set where the characters are dressed up as each other, like Astro is Cody and Cody is Astro, or something? We've tried to do stuff like that. Yeah, like um, there's there's a whole team that works on like employee engagement, and I think they tried some of those things too. And and then uh, the real estate team tried some things like they tried to make Cody as Jason. It was like, please don't do that. Like we don't want our characters to be like, you know, associated with, with murder. So yeah. murder mystery maybe, but not actual like slasher films and, you know, stuff like that. And interesting. Someone brought, up, um, <laughs> someone brought up Disney before. And I think, you know, we, we think about, like how Disney thinks about their characters, you know, it's like, it's their gold standard and, and you kind of, you want to protect your characters in a way, you know, like the way you want to protect the brand. And, and so I think, yeah, you know, you kind of think of it in that way. You don't want anything to happen to the characters or, cr or in the process of creating a character, overlook something mm -hmm. that down the road could reflect badly on the character or company. So you're trying to keep those things in mind and also keeping them consistent as part of that. You don't want a character to like look one way and then you see it in some other form of creative and it's like, is that the same character? The same you, really, one? Yeah. you really want to like lock into some consistency and, and quality control and all that stuff. Yeah. We we've had some we've had some funny, funny ones. Like I remember one year we had um Cody was Paul Bunyan and Cloudy was Babe the Blue Ox. And so we had like them together just, in, and then um, there was, oh gosh, what else? Um, like, yeah, the year we tried to do Stranger Things, we ended up going just 80s. So C Cody was, was Richard Simmons blazing to the badges. And, uh, you know, we had, we had Ruth as Cindy Lauper and, you know, just like those really fun kind of, you know, oh, and then Astro was, had, was a rock lobster because of the B-52s, you know, and, and so there was, it just, and so, the, and how do you make rock lobster? You just, you know, we added headphones, you know, a Walkman, 
you know, things that just kind of felt eighties and, and, uh, you know, tried to, tried to, you know, do that someone. And I'll tell you someone in the, in the company made Astro as a lobster. And I still have no idea who made it. Like I've asked, like who made this, it was the cutest thing. And they weren't, you know, it was, it was like, it was a very much a yes. And, you know, kind of situation when you see something like that and how adorable it was. And it was, you know, something that, um, you know, I just thought would really appeal for folks on the East Coast. And, you know, uh, and so, yeah, look at you. Look how detailed that's getting. That's great, just, Paul. You know, just shading it in a little bit just just for fun and just to kind of see how that might work and help. Yeah. Don't some forget of the, the little wings. And... You got the little oh, yeah, wings. Yeah. See, yeah. See, you can't <laughs> that it's crazy how fast that came to life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. I could draw pretty quick. <laughs> you are a professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love hearing about all the thought you guys put into all these and the, like how closely protected the characters are to you guys and, and their personalities. I love that. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a saying like we all want to have nice things. And so I'm the person in the company that kind of does the thing like what would Astro do? What would Cody do? Does Cody do those things? Is Cody, you know, is Cody showing up as a developer? You know, like there's, they're just, um, you know, someone needs to do that, right? So, you know, I raise my hand, I'm that person, or I, I, you know, I was born into being that person, just being with my background. It was like, I got to do this. And if no one did, like if no one raised their hand and no one could tell folks the story, you know, it's kind of like the thing if you, like from Peter Pan, you know, like, um, if you don't say that I believe in fairies, they don't exist. And it's this idea of like, if you don't tell people what it means and what it's about, it won't mean a thing. And stories are so important, like going to Disney, right? I talk about this a lot, like in, in sessions where um, if you go to Disneyland versus um, another theme park, um, you know the stories before you even walk in the door. You know, kiddos can be like, I want to see... I want to go on Mr. Toad's wild ride. I want to go see Cinderella. I want my picture with Darth Vader. Like they know that that's the things that they want to do, right? That doesn't happen at other theme parks. You go for the rides and there's like a generic king, a generic princess, a dragon, you know, that's like at Legoland, you know, if it, like I know that they have the Lego movie now and they have Lego friends, you know, they have some things that have kind of, you know, characters with names and things and stuff, but like, it's nowhere near the storytelling that Disney does and the Imagineers that help tell that story. So I don't know if other theme parks have people like that, people like Paul and I to just kind of, you know, move the story forward. And, and, and I think more will need to, you know, for sure. I did see Mark in the chat for potential trick or trail had mentioned Sherlock Floams. <laughs> uh, that's super fun. <laughs> I love the idea of like a mystery. We've kind of back to trick or trail head. We've kind of kicked around these like fun, fun, like that, like a mystery campaign where you solve clues. Like that just sounds really fun. Uh, we had also talked about like a time machine idea, but we had a hard time landing. That's right. That's right. Um, I was almost like some some ideas are almost too open ended, and you can't quite <laughs> figure out a place to land with them. Yeah, and with and with the time machine one, you know, when you go into the past again, it's get, you get into the like, you know, old timey things and that's not who we are as a company. So, you know, we want to show, we want to really reflect the, the true story of who we are with innovation, you know, innovation, our values, you know, um, so yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I think an idea of like, you know, just like a who done it, you know, but who did what? What did they do? They didn't murder anyone, right? There's no murder here. So <laughs> they broke what is the it flow. they actually did? You know, what is it that they actually do? Like who done what? Who done who done the badge? Who did the super badge? Like, you know, it has to kind of come back to, you know, you know, the things, you know, and it could be like who made a know, change in prod? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who done who done it? 
<laughs> yeah, and and that kind of stuff really gets the writers that you know write these stories excited, you know, to just kind of think about how to do it. And then you know we'll have a blog post, and we'll have, you know, just we'll have a special badge, you know, all those kind of things. So, I mean, Paul, maybe it is who done it this year. You, you know? know, it's fun. It, it's really it, fun. Kind of gets excited by that idea. I think it's just. Right. Yeah. yeah. You just start to feel it. You're like, Ooh, who did what, you know? Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I think it, it could be, it could be a question, you know, that starts in social and then you follow it to the, you know, the post and then you go and you earn the badge and, you know, and then you feel like you're taking, you know, that you're part of it too. And I think that that could really, you know, that's where the good, see, it's like, it's all about the ideas. The ideas are everything, you know, the characters can come along and do that stuff if the idea works. So fun. I love that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this was so fun. I don't know if I looked yeah. like, okay, I guess. That looks I'm gonna great. I'm going to post it That's everywhere. So post it. Share it. I think That's it looks fridge. fantastic. Uh, get a magnet going and get that on the fridge. Totally behind. a fridge drawing. <laughs> until my five-year-old comes home and she'll fix it for me somehow <laughs> do, do an overdraw you know that's uh that's, there we go perfect that's feedback right there <laughs> gotta take a picture of it first <laughs> <laughs> well this was amazing thank you both so much for coming i loved hearing about all the characters that i know me and tracy love so much our houses are full of them so you guys are already part of our family um oh. and the drawing was amazing and this was super fun and I'm just going to play with my drawing all day and think about trick or trailhead so <laughs> oh, so happy to you know so happy to just you know be invited over um happy that you that you enjoy the work it makes you happy I mean that makes us happy in return like we want to keep doing this and um it's really exciting to see where the characters get to go you know in your in your houses um, they get to be a part of conversations on world stages, like, you know, our characters right now and, in, in, you know, are at a world tour, you know, just having, having fun. And, and so it's really exciting to just kind of see the, um, the delight extend into ways to show magic can be a part of business and creativity can be a part of business in a bigger, you know, in a big way and help make decisions, help guide, help inspire. Like there, yeah, there's just so many things. And so we love, we love what we do and we're, and just so happy that you ask us to, you know, to over to do it. <laughs> and I don't know if you can notice, but my camera keeps falling. Cause I'm trying to like, you know, get my camera right. And Cause you broke your monitor. <laughs> yeah, I broke the monitor. So, you know, I just, but Hey, you know, I was really happy with how this came out. So, you know, so cute. I'll leave it up. I'm gonna take a it's screenshot. It's the cutest. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Chrissy, do we want to do one screenshot of those who are brave enough to share their art so we can post it? Oh, please yeah. do. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna have to turn everybody Here's, back on. I corrected my Hulk meets Chuck E. Cheese and finished <laughs> his feet, but like I tried. I got a little. Yeah. I'll tell you, hands are fish. like my least favorite thing to draw. So I, I don't know if I, if you notice how fast I kind of tried to. Get that done. <laughs> Yeah, hands and feet are like my my. They're tricky. My Achilles I was thankful it was only four there. fingers. <laughs> yeah, four fingers. Yeah, it's just, oh, gosh, drawing hands. I just have a really hard time with it. Oops, I just pushed the wrong button. Trying. Good job, Christine. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold up my picture. Wait, oh wait, I gotta hold it up the right way. There we go. Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Man, you're so uh, cute. Wow. Oh, that looks amazing. That's amazing. Great job. You guys need the higher man. <laughs> I did. I got it. I love the expression in the face. Really, really great. Good job. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So cute. Well, yeah. thanks everybody. We'll let you go eat lunch for realsies. And, uh, <laughs> back, I have to get back day. to work. Yeah. <laughs> get back to work. But hey, oh, great job. Love it. Yeah. Oh, really fun. Take another picture. <laughs>
leave it there. Okay, I got it. <laughs> we'll have to do, you know, Mark, to, to what you'd mentioned, like, um, you know, seeing the drawing, uh, you know, I mean, a drawing session like this available all the time. I have a feeling someday on Salesforce Plus, we will put something up there that just really is about the characters and just kind of take you through drawing a character. Like it just, you know, it, it, it brings a lot of fun to the day. You know, one of the things that we do at Salesforce um, when folks get, you know, join the company, we have um, we have a thing called day one where you just, you know, you just learn about, you know, what it's what it's like at life at Salesforce. And one of the things is a videotape of myself um, from a few years ago where I've encouraged people to just draw your own version of Astro. And it doesn't need to be Astro as a raccoon, but it can be Astro as, you know, um, a pineapple, you know, um, a walking, you know, cup of boba, you know, it can be all different kinds of things. And it just, just to really just kind of create that, that, you know, that space for folks to have fun and, you know, to, to just kind of show we're, we're, we're a different kind of tech company, you know, we're fun company. That's amazing. <laughs> so. Yeah, Thank it's, you guys. It's, it's fun to do this. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. Oh yeah, just really appreciate the the invite and and, uh, you know, hope to see you again sometime uh, in person or, you know, just through, you know, virtually and we can draw another character. So um, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, great job. So cute. <laughs>